I am Michael Kurosh. I live in Santa Barbara, California, one of the most beautiful places on earth. My design center is where people come to reimagine their homes and spaces. I work with the best designers, clients with broad tastes, and experts who navigate the fascinating world of design. I'm always excited to learn something new, and I never say no to a challenge. This is Design Santa Barbara. Welcome to Design Santa Barbara. I'm Michael Kurosh, and today we are in Santa Barbara Design Center, about to head to the home of the world-renowned artist Mara Aboud. I'm excited to talk to her and see her art. Please join us. Mara, thank you for having us at your beautiful home and surrounded by this beautiful art. I would like to ask you a few questions for our Design Santa Barbara audience. It's my pleasure to be with all of you today, Michael. Thank you so much. So when did you begin first painting? Believe it or not, I began painting at five years old. My mother bought me a coloring book and she bought me a box of Crayolas, the large box that had 64 crayons. Well, all I did for days was just take the crayons and group them together. I would not look at the coloring book at all. I was drawn to the crayons and the different color patterns, and my mother kept trying to get me to color, and I just wouldn't do it. Then she bought me another coloring book. I still wouldn't do it. A few weeks later, she came home from shopping. She saw me painting, drawing on a paper bag, she knew immediately that was my thing. I wanted to do my own thing. So she went out and bought a huge block of butcher block paper. And from that time on, the house was filled with art. Yeah. Beautiful, that's a good beginning. Five years of age. Yeah. Wonderful. Did you always know you were going to be an artist? There was never any doubt, never any question. I, I knew it from the beginning. Now, although I painted all my life, I went to art school to become a fashion designer. I felt I could never earn a living as a fine artist. That would be an avocation. But little by little, I began to sell here and there, a friend here or a friend there. And after art school, I went to New York. And that's where my career was launched. Uh, the first few years, I did fashion design, textile design, um, gift and accessory items. And again, people started buying my paintings. Well, I had big ambitions and I was dreaming of the Madison Avenue galleries. And there was one gallery on Madison and 65th, Randall Gallery. I had my heart set on this gallery. Madison between the 50s and 80s had all the high-end galleries. Well, I must have haunted this man for about six months, the owner of the gallery. He finally got so tired of me, he said, okay, bring me a piece and I'll try it for two weeks. He called me two weeks later. I went to the gallery to pick up the piece. He sat me down, he handed me an envelope. There was a check in it to me for $3,000. He had sold the painting for $5,000. It was my first gallery sale. And little by little, it began from there. And then my career took off and Two years after that, I had my first one woman show. Wonderful. Yeah. That's a good story to hear. Yeah. <laughs> How would you describe your style? You know, people say that my style is very unique, that they recognize it anywhere. Now, what you see here is just a version of what I did as a little girl. I always painted intricate designs, intricate patterns. I always loved them. And then when I was about 18 or 19, I got the travel bug and roamed around Europe, absorbing all the cultures, all the art. And people tell me that my paintings are multicultural. A little bit of everywhere, but they say they recognize my art immediately. 
And we have a lot of common friends. And I go to a lot yes. of houses <laughs> around this neighborhood in Santa Barbara. And I see your paintings just about everywhere on the wall. And they treasure it. This is the most beautiful thing anybody well, can see. Well, you know, see. I've really been blessed. And I've been honored four times in my career as Artist of the Year. Wonderful. So, wonderful. And you deserve it every year, no, I would say. No. <laughs> but I never in my life thought that I could earn a living as a fine artist. And 35 years later, I am still doing it. It has been my only income all these years. Beautiful. It is just it's high been art. It's a miracle. Amazingly been beautiful. Who are some of your biggest influences? Well, when I was about 17 or 18, I was madly in love with Vincent van Gogh and Gauguin. That was my beginning. And to be honest with you, I went to France and I went to Auvergne and I visited Vincent van Gogh's grave. I always felt a kindred spirit with him. But in all honesty, I have to tell you, everything I do, I believe, is innate from my childhood. My mother used to make the most gorgeous Afghans. All these brilliant squares would be laid out on the table with all the colors and designs before she'd knit them together. And I had a huge collection of kaleidoscopes. So intricate patterns, designs, colors have always been in my blood. It was there from the beginning. There you go, beautiful. I understand your family has deep connections with art, literature, design, and fashion. Can you tell us about that? Well, my brother Joseph Abud, and I think you're and wearing I say, yes, one of his I wear one of his today. suits today. <laughs> God bless Joseph. He's an international menswear designer, and we are so proud of him. Everyone in the family is talented. My sister Nancy, who we lost 21 years ago to cancer, was a fabulous sculptor, and it was an avocation for her. But had she been alive and been able to proceed, she would have been very successful. And my sister Jeanette writes music and lyrics. In fact, she wrote a wonderful song called Santa Barbara by the sea for the Santa Barbara Choral Society. Oh, that is wonderful to you. Yeah. Very good. And, and family history, and I think yes. I told you about this earlier. Yes, yes. Khalil Gibran, who wrote The Prophet, Khalil and my grandfather were first cousins. My great-grandmother was Miriam Gibran, and her brother was Khalil's father. And my grandfather and Khalil grew up together in Lebanon before coming to the States. It's wonderful to hear. Thank you so much. Today we are with Mara Aboud. We will be back right after the break. This week on Michael's Minute, we're going to be talking about my favorite subject, rugs. Every designer will tell you to start from the rug up. It's the key. We have personally curated a rug collection of thousands and with over 100 combined years of design experience, we can help you find the perfect rug for your space. And if you absolutely have to look online, go to santobarbaradc.com or rugzamor.com, find the perfect rug, then come in here and see it in person. I will gladly show it to you myself. And with all our rugs 50% off, our prices can't be beat. Come into Fort and Oliver Street and let us help you find your rug. This week on Design FIR, we're going to talk about sofas and the unknown mistakes people make. Did you know average American spends 46 minutes a day in a car? But they spend 5 hours and 4 minutes on average on a sofa. So why would you go out there and spend tens of thousands of dollars for something to use for 46 minutes and then go ahead and buy something cheap that you sit on it for 5 hours and 4 minutes? 
At Santa Barbara Design Center, we create your custom sofa that is made for you specifically and to your shape and size and comfort and your family. So when you're sitting and watching TV or talking and conversing with your friends, you're sitting on actually something that represents you. Your car represents you, why shouldn't your sofa? Thank you for joining us on Design FYI this week and please come see me at Santa Barbara Design Center, Fort and Olive, and let me help you find the right sofa for you and your family. Welcome back to Design Santa Barbara. Today we are honored to be with world-renowned artist Mara Aboud. Thank you for having us. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Appreciate it. We have some more questions we're gonna ask you and okay. appreciate your answers. Can you share your process from inspiration to finish artwork? That's interesting for a lot of people to know. Right, well let me tell you, believe it or not, before I even begin a painting, I see it in my mind. And then I start sketching on a canvas. If it's a very large canvas, I'll do a small version of it, just in black and white. And when I begin to paint, that initial idea that I have in my head, I let the canvas take over. I don't try to control it because sometimes the most amazing things happen when you begin to paint. And you see things before you even see the colors in your mind. You see it. I always have a very clear vision, but sometimes I'm very much surprised as to where it goes. These are very complicated, very intricate things you do. Do you start from the background to the front, front to the back, top to the bottom? <laughs> How do you do that? Or just go no. all over the place? All over. It, it, no, there is no set order. <laughs> It is very interesting. I it used to is. paint and I always yeah. start from the very no. back because no. I could put the... Okay. No. I, I never know where... Just what appeals to me at the moment. I don't have any set direction or, or, or theme as to what to do first. No, it just all comes very naturally, oh, organically. Yes. Because it's just amazing how you do this thing. And I can just... only do between six and eight paintings a year maximum. Uh, they, they take me, some of them take me months to do. For instance, the swans behind me took over two and a half months. It's amazing. I'm looking at it, the strokes, the little yes. lines between every color and the amount of colors in it is stunning. Thank you so much. Beautiful. No, thank you for painting it. <laughs> I'm just noticing it. <laughs> All right, tell us about painting on silk. What are the challenges and rewards that come with it? Well, I started painting on silk uh, about 10 years ago. And afterwards, in our next segment, I'll show you a piece on Love silk. Love to see some, yes. It's a painting of sunflowers. And I have to tell you, it's completely different than oils or acrylics. Because if I make a mistake with oils or acrylic, I can just white it out. With silk, what you put down stays. There is no changing it. So when I first began, I used to hold my breath because, you know, you have to do a lot of visualization to know that this is exactly what you want. But it is so wonderful because silk paints are like watercolors. It's so fluid, they flow beautifully. And the amazing thing is, when I began painting on silk, the owners of um, San Ysidro Village came to visit me and they fell in love with the sunflowers on silk, which I will show you afterwards. And they said, Mara, can you create this on tiles? We have an area in the complex where we really would like to enhance it. It's a bare wall. And two years later, they came back and I created that outdoor art installation for them, which is at San Ysidro Village. And it was amazing to see my work come into a whole different life form with the tiles. With the tiles, beautiful, yeah. wonderful. As a Boston native, how does Santa Barbara and our beautiful community influence you as an artist? I see the beautiful view you have out here, so that for sure makes you bright and happy every morning, but how does that influence you? Well, if anything, it deters me from painting because <laughs> it's so beautiful. I just want to go out and play. 
No, me too. I was looking at this thing. It's just right. mesmerizing. When I was in New York, the weather was miserable sometimes. It rained. I was much more creative in New York <laughs> than I was here. But I came out for a show in 79, and I fell madly in love with You're California. You're not that old. No, I am, I'm 27. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in love with the palm trees in the ocean because as a student I had roamed through the south of France and it reminded me so much of Cannes. It was like a little mini Cannes and I knew I had to be here. Just amazing place. Tell us about the forest of internal spring. Oh, that's a children's book that I am now working on. Actually, I wrote this story about, oh, 20 years ago but I haven't had time to do the illustrations. But now I'm going to set aside time for my writing. I have always believed I'm a writer who's been painting all her life. Oh, no kidding. So you're gonna be a better writer than your painter? I, I, I don't That's know. That's gonna be a world record. Let's I see that. I don't know, but I, I have some goals. So the next few years, I want to focus on my children's book, an art book, and uh, stories about my family. I have so many stories and so many memories. I am what I am today because of my parents. Wonderful. Because of the influence and the lifestyle. They believed in their children so much. There was no one like us. They told us we were fabulous and we believed in them. And you guys are fabulous. Yep. It's not just saying because a lot of parents tell their kids they're fabulous and they're not, you know. <laughs> you guys are fabulous between you, your brother yep. and so on, you guys are world famous. God is good. God is good. So I understand Soulful Journey helped you get past some recent dark times. Yes. Can you share that story with us? I, I will. You know, it started with the mudslides and the fires. Unfortunately. And at that time, I lost three outdoor commissions and two shows. And then it went downhill after that. Then we got hit with COVID. So for two years, I didn't pick up a paintbrush. That's the first time in my life wow. that has ever happened. And I don't know what happened, but last October, I started painting Soulful Journey. And I started it and then I let it go. I said, I can't do this. I can't paint anymore. There's nothing left in me. I really was burnt out. And then in December, I started again and let it go. Well, I don't know what happened January 1st. I woke up and I've never been one for New Year resolutions. It just happened to be January 1st. I started the painting again and I painted all the way through the end of February and completed it. So that brought me back into to my painting. creativity, yes. That's wonderful, yes. that's wonderful. Thank you for being on our show. It's wonderful having you on our show. We'll be back with more Mara after the break. How many times in the last year have you said to yourself, I really need a new sofa? Spending so much time at home lately, you deserve the most comfortable furniture. At Santa Barbara Design Center's massive showroom, we have numerous selections of sofas and sectionals that you can take home today. Or we can custom build your dream sofa. We make the most comfortable and stylish sofas and sectionals in the industry today. Just ask the top designers in Santa Barbara. They use our sofas and sectionals in their projects because they know clients are beyond satisfied with the results. For a decision as important as this, don't go online or buy from a catalog photo. Come into Fort and Oliver Street and let our experienced team help you find the perfect fit for your home. Trust me, you want to sit on it before you buy. Today I would like to talk to you about rugs. Three important things to remember when you are buying a rug. First is the size. Size is very important and this is what you have to do your study. So if it's for a living room, I recommend to have the front legs of all the furniture to sit on the certain rug you're buying. So go measure it. Make sure you have at least a foot extended beyond the front legs. If you can afford it, 
get a rug that encompasses all the furniture to be sitting on it. So usually for a living room, you're talking an 8x10, 9x12, a bigger living room, 10x14, and if you want something to sit on it, 12x15 or 12x18. Second, there is a style. It is very important that the style you pick matches the house you have. Check the room, is it a traditional house, is it a modern house, is it a transitional house? You pick the style matching your house and your living style. Lastly, and one of the most important steps is the type of rug you're gonna buy. I highly recommend you to do your study and see what type of rug is good for your situation. Most rugs I recommend are hand knotted. So these are the type of rugs that they're done by hand. They're mostly natural fibers. They don't have any chemicals. They don't have any machines involved making it. They're hand knotted and they get more valuable over the time. And they are very durable and long lasting. These are three things to remember when you're buying a rug. Thank you for joining us. Welcome back to Design Santa Barbara. Today we are with world-renowned artist Mara Aboud. We are at her house. Thank you so very much for having us. It's a pleasure seeing your paintings in person. And Michael, as I said, it's a pleasure for me to have all of you here. Thank Truly. you. Thank you so very much. I would like to read you some of your accolades. I'm probably sure you're familiar with it, but I tell you. 1977 International Artist of the Year. International Boo Arts New York. 1980 Artist of the Year. Santa Barbara Arts Festival. 1998 International Artist of the Year, International Women's Conference. What do these titles mean to you? Well, first of all, the titles, I mean, it's an honor for me, but you know, you have to live up to your titles. You can't just relax and rely on a title. You have to work hard and you have to prove to yourself that you are worthy of these titles. I mean, for sure you're worthy of this thing. It's like winning an Oscar. So basically, you're worthy of it, but it means a lot. It's just something yeah, that not course. too many artists can achieve in their lifetime. It is very special. Yes, it is. But you know what's even more special? When someone comes and buys a painting and hangs it in their home, and they call me and they say, Mara, we're related. We love this piece. It was meant for this wall. That is really the accolade I love. I can tell you, a lot of people have bought your paintings. Thanks. I have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what's next for you? Well, as I said, it's going to be writing. I've been wanting to do this for so many years, to follow through on my children's stories, on the stories about my family. Some of them are hilarious. And what I'm hoping to do is stories about the family with a few illustrations and some recipes because I have a reputation for my cooking. But that comes from my mother. That has nothing to do with That me. I want to see because yeah, I, I love I, the cooking. I, I love, I, I do a lot of Lebanese dishes. I love it, love it. How can people see your work and learn more about you? Well, at this point that they can just go online and see my website. They can call me directly. They can just go to my website and contact me directly from there. They can email me or they can call me. That's wonderful. We would like to see that silk piece you painted. Is there any possibility oh, we can look at it and explain this a little bit about it? I would love you to see that, yes. It's one of my favorite pieces on silk. This was my original painting. And believe it or not, this was all a piece of white silk that I hand stretched. Not a black silk, but white silk. White silk. This oh is my all goodness. silk dyes that you see here. And this is the one you cannot make no mistake. Yeah, please. No, you can't. I, I used to hold my breath when I began, especially when I had to do solid areas. But this is a piece that uh, the lovely couple from uh, San Ysidro Village saw and asked me to do the outdoor art installation of tiles, the tiles of sunflowers. So this piece was the inspiration. Inspiration. There you go. It's beautiful. These are stunning colors and rich. And you think like you want to pick the seeds out and you know eat them. It's beautiful. Beautiful. I'm glad you like it. It's one of my favorite pieces. And Michael, I thought you might be interested in seeing my tile work. Oh, I would love that to see I that. That began about ten years ago as well. Love to see that. Great. Mara, we have these marvelous tiles here that they're parrots. Can you tell us how you made this and 
Whoa. Well, you know, this is just stunning. I look at this thing; they look like real. I want to pick them up, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back to tiles, you know, people have been telling me for years that my paintings look like tiles and that they look like mosaics. And I finally started experimenting with tiles, and I have fallen in love with the process. They're unbelievable. And these are indoor tiles, and they're fired at a much lower temperature than the outdoors. The outdoors are fired at about 1,600 degrees, and they're impervious to all kinds of weather. Now, these colors are very brilliant, but the outdoors are a little more subtle only because such a high uh, firing. They cook on much higher temperature. Just beautiful parrots and literally they look like they're looking at you. The <laughs> eyes are just like stunning piece, stunning piece. I love the color combination, the That's blues and the greens. Obviously you like color. Uh, yeah, I love color. Yeah. I love color. Yeah, yes, no getting away from it. Yeah, my life is filled with a kaleidoscope of yeah, color. Yeah, color is life. Yeah. I say that yeah. all the time. Yes, is. color is life. It is. We have also these beautiful dolphins, which yeah. are actually the sun of our city. So yeah, what is that true. about? Well, I have to tell you, I've always been madly in love with dolphins, way before I moved to Santa Barbara. There was something about them, their fluidity, the way they move, what they represent. And then I came here and I saw dolphins everywhere. From your window you can from, see dolphins from probably. From my window, as you did earlier today, there was a school of dolphins. I've really been blessed. I adore Santa Barbara. It's brought me great peace and uh, a wonderful life with wonderful friends, truly. They're beautiful. So you said they're commissioned and somebody yes, made you do that? Yes, these are limited editions. And I've done eight of them so far. Each one is done custom made to order. And they're signed and they're numbered. And there will never be more than 100 pieces in the edition. This is a much smaller edition. Only 50 pieces will ever be made. But I've only done uh, two so far. Wonderful, thank you so much. Mara, it was a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you for having us on in your home and showing us your wonderful art. It's an honor and looking forward to have you again on our show. Thank you very much. Thank it you very really much. has been great fun. Thank, thank you. you. That was today's show with world-renowned artist Mara Wood. Looking forward to see you next week. Thank you for watching Design Santa Barbara.